No, they're seedless. Mm. You're going to poop great later. I poop great all the time. But now it's going to be even better. It's going to be like... <laughs> that wouldn't be my definition of a great poop. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions. You ever have those painful poops? <laughs> yes, I have had a painful poop. It feels poop. like there's like a shard, shard of glass. glass. <laughs> I had, I'm not kidding, this is how traumatic it was. It was probably circa 2010, 2011. I was in Screen Actors Guild and I had to go, it was one of those moments where you're talking to somebody and everything inside of you screaming, run to the bathroom, run to the bathroom. So when I was done, I ran to the bathroom, got inside, closed the thing, sat on the toilet, and I was in trouble. And I, I thought, I genuinely thought I was gonna need to call it a, like someone to help me with, like I had a medical emergency. I was sweating, I was trembling, I had hands on either side of the, the thing holding on to me, I'm just because it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't exit and it was just like someone had, like you said, shard of glass. Tell us about your most painful poop down in the comments yeah, below. Yeah, please, that's what this is about. In <laughs> fact, you don't know this, but whatever the thumbnail says, that's not what we're watching. <laughs> we're gonna watch the history of bowel movements. It's shitty. Uh, <laughs> today we got a video, video school. Why are so many CEOs are from India? Oh. I can tell you. They're smart. They're smart. <laughs> <laughs> They're smarter than the average bear. Uh, they, they work harder. They care more. They all get uh, degrees in engineering well, or doctors. They or... have a better work ethic. <laughs> I did the video for you. Bye everybody. That's all you needed. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, obviously, the, I think Google, Twitter now, there's so many that are just popping up. I guess for people yeah, who aren't associated with India, like, they're like, what? There's so many Indians. Remember when the orange monster was not allowing visas to the Indians that were coming in with the engineering mm -hmm. things? And it was like, because you wanted to give the jobs to the Americans. It's like, I'm thinking to myself, so that's the criteria. <laughs> we're just going to give it to them because they're American. Yeah. Did it ever occur to you that the reason we're hiring so many people from India is because the Americans are too dumb to do the jobs? Yeah, it's very possible. Adobe, Microsoft, and IBM no. are all run by people who Twitter. grew up in India. Yep, the Twitter. latest to join these ranks is Twitter CEO Parag Agrawal, who took over from Jack Dorsey. People originally from India make up 1% of the total U.S. population, yet wow. about 6% of Silicon Valley's workforce. Oh, thanks. So yeah. why that are there so sense. many tech CEOs who hail from India? When Satya Nadella took over as CEO of Microsoft in 2014, the company was in bad shape. Bill Gates was reportedly an angry and difficult boss. What a his surprise. His successor, Steve Ballmer, apparently wasn't any better. What a surprise. Microsoft was also a dinosaur. It had failed to innovate. For example, it lost the smartphone battle to Apple. Along comes Nadella, an engineer who rose through the ranks of Microsoft to become the CEO. Nadella changed the culture of the company. He made it clear anger and yelling weren't welcome. He also sought to make Microsoft relevant. We now need to make Microsoft thrive in a mobile first and a cloud first world. Under his direction, Microsoft moved its software to non-Windows devices and expanded its cloud business, Azure. That innovative spirit of problem solving was bred in his native country. India is home to nearly 1.4 billion people. It's the second most populous country on earth after China and is expected to overtake China as the most populous country in a few years. A lot of Although sex. India has made remarkable progress, poverty is still a major challenge. Yeah. Nearly a quarter of the population lives below the poverty line of $1.90 a day. According to the United Nations Development Program, they face corruption, poor infrastructure, and limited opportunities. So they learn to be resilient, comparatively, adapt, and overcome endless obstacles. This leads them to be problem solvers, a key asset in any corporation. Sundar Pichai has had to solve many problems after taking over at the helm of Google in 2015, at a time when big tech is being scrutinized over the power they hold. He became the archetype of a kinder, calmer, gentler leader in tech. Pachai earned an engineering degree at one of the Indian Institutes of Technology. The IITs are kind of like the Indian equivalent of MIT, with an even lower acceptance rate, reportedly of 1 or 2 percent. After Pachai graduated, his ticket to America came in the form of a master's at Stanford. Nice. Going to a top grad school in the States is how many Indians land up in the land of opportunity. They appear to follow this well-trodden path. 
They did their undergrad at a great school in India, got a master's in the US, where they studied STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. More than half of all international students in America pursued a STEM degree in the past academic wow. year. American immigration favors people with specialized skills. After Pachai graduated, he went on an H-1B visa to work at consulting firm McKinsey. The H-1B allows American companies to employ foreign workers, many of whom are in IT-related fields. The U.S. government awarded nearly 75% of these visas to Indians in 2020. No, in comparison, China trailed far behind in second at 12%. Wow, dang, know that. The fact that so many Indians can speak English is a tremendous advantage in the West, and they're comfortable with American business culture. Possibly because it mirrors the thriving most industry back in, the world. in Bangalore, Chennai, and Hyderabad. They're also more likely to want to work overseas. Hyderabad. Even That's how we probably Chinese used to pronounce international it. National students return to China after graduating, according to China's Ministry of Education. Chinese entrepreneurs prefer starting their own companies at home. Mm. Alibaba is known they as the Amazon of China. Tencent owns the messaging app WeChat, used by 1.2 billion people. Huawei is one of the giants of the tech industry. China's transition from a manufacturing hub to a tech hotbed has largely been driven by government policy. In the late 70s, Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping encouraged foreign businesses to set up offices in China, which fostered a startup environment. On That's the other hand, building. India has a problem of too much talent leaving the country for Just good. Saw a video about that. It has the highest number of migrants living abroad, at 17 and a half million, according to the UN. And more Indians gave up their passports to become naturalized American citizens in 2020 mm. than the Chinese, continuing the trend from past years. Well, this China oh, that's not a surprise. The yeah, drain no, from India China... is starting to recede. You and can't compare China to India. And increasing homegrown Indian startups are becoming unicorns, meaning the companies are valued at one billion or more. The data platform Traction tells NewsThink India created 47 unicorns in 2021 a significant jump from the 17 in 2020, and even less in years past. The tech ecosystem is being bolstered by powerful investment firms such as SoftBank that have been pumping money into Indian startups. But in order to entice more people to remain in their native country, salaries will have to catch up with those in the West. The average American tech worker earns around $98,000 a year, according to the online recruiting platform Dice. Tech salaries in India vary greatly, but the job site in India is nowhere near that amount of money. At twenty thousand dollars US, yeah, that's under the poverty line here in America. Nowhere 50, 000, near that, which makes them some of the top earners in your country. I think that's if you make under twenty thousand, you're under the poverty line here. States, as salaries grow along with India's startup boom, this could have implications for the number of exceptional individuals desiring to move abroad. The one thing that the CEOs of tech giants have in common is their strong background in engineering. If you wanted to improve your STEM skills, my sponsor Brilliant can help you achieve your goals. Nice. Yes, nice. Brilliant is a website <laughs> that was good. That nice smooth. That was, that, was a, that was a nice uh, transition. I'm yeah. sure they were very happy with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that little uh, transition. That was good. Uh, yeah, essentially, they're smart. <laughs> well, yeah. we told you in the beginning. Uh, yeah, it, I didn't realize the uh, that that number that they gave though that. There was 75% of the people that get oh. visas for that certain one are 75% Indian. 75% of them are that's Indian. That's a high number. That's a really I mean, high it's not number. shocking from what we've no. learned about the, basically the education system and how much it favors engineering or yeah. doctors or stuff like that. No, and we talked about this in that other video that one of the reasons, and it is, it, it's problematic, is the valuation of the work for a dollar per hour. Yeah. That there's just, there's no way a company in India is going to be able to compare what they can pay per hour when you're comparing dollar to rupee. It's just not fair because a dollar has 73, 74 times the value of a rupee. Yeah. Uh, so it's really, it's a difficult challenge that you have to maintain uh, these these folks in this sure, region. Well, I'm sure a lot of them, obviously, as we know, Indians love their they home love country. their country. And so I'm sure they'd love to come back. But obviously, yes. if they were like... Um, going to make $20,000 here or I'm going to make $100,000 yeah, and I come on. live here and send money back yeah. probably to my family. Yeah. I, that, um, that's a hard problem. And that's, that's what I hope happens. I hope for anybody who leaves and comes that they do that. Like I know we've talked about this before. I personally know people that I worked with who were from Mexico and they, they send a lot back. Uh, they don't just hoard it all from themselves here and forget where they came from. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's the case with most Indians. And I, I had also mentioned a little bit ago, I don't like the comparisons 
I mean, you, you kind of have to because they make up the majority of the numbers of comparing the Chinese to Indians. But the reasons why the Chinese yeah. do what they do and the reasons why American companies hire Chinese, this is and not apples to apples by any stretch of the imagination. Because yeah. what the Chinese do has a completely different reality behind it when it comes to what they can and can't yeah. do and are expected to do according to the government in China versus the freedoms that Indians have. Yeah. There's just no comparison. <laughs> Yeah, oh, absolutely. But uh, informational video, very good. Yeah, let very us good. More informational videos, and if you're an engineer, let us know down below. Say hi. Yeah. Everybody say hi. hi. We want to know more about stem cell research. I don't, but I'm I'm happy that you know about it. I was joking, you know. I'm so a we'll say we're, I'm a backbencher. Yeah, we're we're joking. We know the difference between stem in the world of engineering and stem cells in the world. Plants of Plants have stems. So. Also, weed. Yeah, I was going to say, stems don't smoke well. That's true. It's, you need, you, you need to just get the, the stems, stems out. Get the stems out. <laughs> That's what Ranveer taught us. Yeah. <laughs>